Why does everybody got to keep talking shit about the fucking ketogenic diet? Getting kind of old and shit. Well, this latest triggering thing uh, was submitted to me thanks to Dave and MSP, um, and it's a study, and it's I, I found flaws with it. The link to this study will be in the description, or at least to uh, one of the summaries on JAMA. Um, and I want to kind of go through it a little bit and talk about you know, the message that, that people are trying to use now to destroy the ketogenic diet is it is not more effective at weight loss than any other motherfucking diet. And that is bullshit. This is Scott the Truck Driver Uncut, by the way. It's a one-take video that I will try and plow through. And uh, this is for filler in between days of full videos that I do. Um, and it's also replacing the written blog. So that way I can get some video content to you every day. Please check out scottthetruckdriver.com to keep up with everything I'm doing. All my videos get posted there. There's a recommended product page. There's a tip jar in case you like what I'm doing here and you want to throw a few bucks my way so that I can keep doing this and spending time doing this and shit. But since Dave and MSP has contributed quite a bit in the past week or two, um, you know... I can spend a lot of time making videos and shit. So, anyways, the diet, it's called the Diet Fits uh, Study. And it basically, it uh, randomized clinical trial among 609 overweight adults. Weight change over 12 months was not significantly different for participants in the high or healthy low fat group versus the healthy low carb group. Uh, the healthy low fat group lost 5.3 kilograms. The healthy low carb group lost 6.0 kilograms after a year of being on the diet. Um, I'm finding that the, you know, this is might be a vegan versus keto study, which means there's probably a little bit of bias behind it. But I'm giving it a, a little bit of a shot because the point it's trying to make is kind of, in my book, irrelevant in terms of the ketogenic diet. Um, so basically it's saying you're not going to lose any more weight long term, a year being what they're citing, than you would low term or short term. You know, you, you, get, you experience short term weight loss a lot better but over the long term, supposedly, there's negligible difference between the two diets. Um, and that point is, I feel, is irrelevant. Now, some other flaws with the study are it was it used classes. It, used, it, it wasn't a controlled study. They didn't put motherfuckers in a room and feed them. They gave them a book. They gave them guidelines. They took classes. They pounded the fuck master. They did all of these th other confounding, in my opinion, variables because people do different levels of physical performance, um, so on and so forth. They wanted to also test out um, if there was a genetic component to this, but ultimately, you know they extrapolated from the study that was originally designed to see if there's people genetically prone to one diet or another and they pulled it into this oh shit it's uh you know basically it doesn't make a difference if you're low fat or high fat and so there's flaws in that because you can't people aren't honest when they fuck up all the time all right so you're going to have that variable in the mix you're going to have the variable of cheat days you know, we all know that most people that are doing this are doing massive amounts of cheat days, sometimes every weekend. Um, I've been railing against that, but the feedback I've gotten is I'm having a fucking cheat day and you can suck my dick. You know, that's kind of the, the, the vibe I'm getting, um, which is fine. You know, that's your life. You do what you want. I'm just choosing to try and limit my personal cheat days down quite a bit. Um, so you can't really, you know, over a year, you're not getting a controlled group. Now, it's, to be fair, it'd be very expensive and very time-consuming and very, you know, intensive to do a controlled study for a year. 
Um, especially with 609 individuals, wouldn't be impossible. You'd get like maybe 10 or 20, and some of those would drop out because they don't like being cooped up for a year. So, it, so, that, so that's one of the factors. There, this study, you know, when you look at these studies, you got to keep in mind some of the common sense aspects of it and then apply real world situations to the motherfuckers that were in the study. And I know from my anecdotal evidence and the comments I get and the things people say and the things I've observed and with people who are trying to I'm trying to work with in my personal life that you know it just doesn't work out that way there's a lot of factors involved when it comes to long-term weight loss and honestly weight loss is not what the ketogenic diet is for you heard it. I said it right here. The ketogenic diet is not for weight loss. If that is the only reason you are going keto, you're fucking up, all right? Keto is about getting rid of hunger. It's about increasing your health. It's about reversing insulin resistance. It's about getting rid of your fatty liver. It's about normalizing the system that has been broken by the low-fat, high-carb bullshit we've been doing for 40 years, and now then we transitioned into high-fucking-vegetable-oil-slash-high-fucking-refined-carbohydrate diet that is the standard American diet today. And we've taken all of this, and oh, okay, we count the calories, we do all that, but the truth be told, the ketogenic diet isn't, you get weight loss out of it. That's true. But what it's doing for you has very little to do with a goal of losing weight. I can tell you the two cohorts in this study, the high, the healthy low-fat group was hungrier on average than the healthy low-carb group. I know this from personal experience. It's just how it goes. The you know, differences in hormonal responses. I can also tell you that in order to maintain their weight loss, that the low fat group had to count calories, had to go to the gym, had to get in that hamster wheel and stay there to maintain that weight loss. If they stopped counting their calories on the low fat diet, if they ate whenever they want and didn't stop until they were full, and they didn't go to the gym, they would probably regain the weight. So that is something that they don't really address in this study. Whereas the low-carb group, they're not hungry. They're eating less calories over time. This has been studied repeatedly, That, and a lot of people use it for, okay, the ketogenic diet's only good because you're just eating a calorie deficit all the time. Well, if you're eating in a calorie deficit all the time, you feel good, you have plenty of energy, you have access to your body, you access to your body fat, and you're, you know, just got this real fat-burning machine ramped up, and you can eat till you're full, all the time and not count calories and not go to the gym but don't regain the fucking weight it requires very little effort other than making sure you keep your carbs under a certain amount of day depending on how fucked up you are i'm a 50 gram guy i know there's 30 gram people i know there's 20 grams i know there's the extreme end the carnivore motherfuckers that are doing zero fucking grams or as close as you can get because there's glycogen in meat but it, you gotta understand that it's it's not for weight loss all right there are many ways to lose weight I do not dispute that you can eat whatever the fuck you want under 500 calorie deficit and go to the gym and lose massive fuck tons of weight. That's not what we're here to do. That's not what my channel is really about. I'm trying to correct the deficiencies, the, the problems in the way I've been eating that caused me to become obese, to become pre-diabetic. And now that I know how to fix all of these issues, and the, the, for me, the most significant issue was hunger. I did not want to be hungry. I don't like being hungry. I don't like being obsessed 
with what I'm going to eat every day, and I am currently not. I obsess about this stuff because it's my channel, but I don't, like sit here thinking about my next meal and when I'm going to eat it. In fact, I get a little pissy when people plan out my meals for the day. You know, like, hey, you want to eat? You know, and I just ate three hours or four hours ago, and I'm like, fuck. You know, so I just have a little something when I can. Um, or I try and plan around if I know that shit's coming up. But the, the fact remains that keto is good for fixing your hormones for reversing insulin resistance, for normalizing your blood sugar, because many of us are pre-diabetic or diabetic, and for making us healthy. We might not get to see our fucking abs. I see Thomas DeLauer all the fucking time now with showing his shirt off. He's more rippled than ever. And that's not realistic for like a 65-year-old who's trying to lose weight and get reverse diabetes. That's not even realistic for a 30 or 40-year-old to do because it takes an exorbitant amount of time. You know, the young kids, if they got on board with his way of doing it, would be able to take their shirt off. By the time they're in their 30s and 40s, they'll be all ripped and bulbing and bulging and then fucking getting their dick sucked all over the place. These, you know, I don't dispute that. But that should not be the reason we're doing this. We're doing this because there is an obesity epidemic, there is a diabetes epidemic, there is a fucking heart disease epidemic. And cancer. You know. I, I feel like shit that I left cancer to, to that last part there. But the fact is, those are the reasons to do it. And you know what? The weight loss is a benefit. It's a, a symptom of what we are doing. It should not be the only reason we do this. So whenever I see one of these fucking ketogenic diets, worst goddamn diet ever to exist, fucking articles, studies, or it ain't no better than the low-fat shit, I call bullshit. There are many aspects of the ketogenic diet that make it my default choice now. And I like not having to worry about shit. I know what I can and can't eat, pretty much by heart. I know where the danger zones are. I know what restaurants I can maybe eat semi-keto in. As in, it won't throw me out of ketosis, but it's probably not the healthiest choice. And it'll probably result in some weight gain, water weight gain, bloating, or so on and so forth. Because I'll be ex exposed to vegetable oils and various other bullshit and hidden sugars that maybe they don't tell me about. And maybe I'll occasionally get fucked if I eat out a lot, but I don't eat out a lot anymore. And that's part of the key. And by the way, that saves a shit ton of fucking money in the process, too. So... The bottom line is, yes, the ketogenic diet isn't going to cause you more long-term weight loss than any other fucking diet that you can do. But what it will do long-term is make your quality of life better. You won't be hungry. You won't be counting your fucking calories. You'll eventually become unaddicted to refined carbs and sugar. I don't give a fuck about bread. I don't give a fuck about sugar. I still have some fond memories of pasta. And, but you know what? I've had the opportunity for a couple weeks now to where I could go have a pasta cheat day, and I've chosen not to. At the very least, I want my blood work to go through before I even think about any of this, the concept of a cheat day. But the more I think about it, every time I think about having a cheat day, Another part of me goes, what the fuck for? You're fine. You're eating happily. I just had ketogenic pumpkin pie. You know, today. It's fucking great. It's a junk food. I can't eat it all the time. But it's great every once in a while that I can reward myself with a food that isn't going to fuck me. That isn't going to make me hungry in three hours. That isn't going to derail my progress by four to five pounds in sometimes one day. That I'm off of the roller coaster. That I'm out of the treadmill. That is the gym. That is the fucking doctor's office. I'm not involved in any of that. And I'm in my 40s. I know a lot of people my age that are on medication of some kind for multiple reasons. I'm not. Did I get lucky? Fuck no. I was on the path. 
I would be medicated right now. I would probably be on some kind of diabetic medication. I would also probably be on some kind of CPEP for sleep apnea because I was having issues with that early on. And But once I got this under control, all of that went away. And that is what we need to do. We don't need to do it for weight loss. In fact, I would argue if you're ketogenic and you don't get to normal BMI, you should be happy with it. Because you're probably off your fucking medication. You probably feel pretty good. You're not having to bust your ass in the gym. You're not having to fucking worry about, you know, all of these metabolic diseases killing you because it's difficult to impossible for diabetes or heart disease to really take hold if you are legit keto with very little to no cheat days. And then when you sprinkle fasting into the mix, which I haven't even hardly mentioned, because it's kind of something that's outside the bounds of this and was not even addressed in this study, um, fasting is synergetic, synergetic, whatever, with the ketogenic fucking diet. It is, all right? They work together very easily. And then when you throw in fat fasting into the mix, which is a new thing that I've been exploring lately and I'm very pleased with, that is also an important part of this and would not be possible on a low-fat diet, obviously. I mean, how do you have a fat fast if you're eating high-carb, low-fat? You don't because you're not supposed to eat shit tons of carbs and shit tons of fat at the same time. You're not. And if you think about it, that makes sense. Because mainly if we were hunter-gatherers, we would be eating the carbs when we couldn't get the fat. And when we would be eating the fuck out of the animal when we kill it. Because so we can get as much out of it as we can before it goes bad. You know, it makes sense that our bodies are not wired to consume shit tons of fat and shit tons of carbs at the same time. Um, there are some arguments to be made that if you do high-carb, low-fat that you are taking yourself out of that high-fat, high-carb paradigm, and you will be in better health than a standard American diet motherfucker. However, you're not addressing the caloric intake versus caloric outgo issue. You're not addressing the metabolic issues. If you uh, lost weight using the fucking eat less, move more paradigm, you are lowering your metabolism. And I'm sorry, but high-carb, low-fat will not raise your metabolism as efficiently as high fat, low carb. I've experimented with it. I've seen the results. I've done long fat fasts. I've done long fasts. I've seen the difference. I've done the, the carb days, the cheat days, the fucking carb cycling. I've been through the ringer of how to keep carbs in my life. And every time it caused me issues. Since I've started alternate day fat fasting, which is able, I'm able to do because I'm keto, um, and not worry about any side effects. Not, I know motherfuckers are going to try it, even if they're eating carbs still. Um, that's up to you at your own risk. I don't advise it. I would get blood work regularly if you did that. So, so far, it's only been, you know, I'm on in the eating window right now. I'm doing a 36 ADF alternate day fat fasting, ADFF protocol. 36 hours I can eat when I'm hungry or when I want. I generally end up eating maybe 20 to 23 hours, um, a couple of meals and maybe a snack on the eat day just because I'm a little hungrier on those days. Um... But I'm not, like, ravenously hungry. I'm just like, you know, I can eat more and not get full as quick. And on the fast days, I have six to 800 calories of fat only. Or very low protein, very low carbohydrate. Under 50 calories worth of protein and carbs in any one meal. And ratio-wise, 90% fat. Most, you know, would probably be where I'm landing. And... You know, and that's fine. And I don't get hungry those days. I don't feel deprived. I'm I'm fine. And But if I was not a keto-adapted person, I may have issues on those fast days. You know, that's just been my experience. Maybe someone else had a different experience. But that's what I've been doing. And I got down to 186 pounds after the fast day yesterday. 
Um, I'm up to 187 this morning, 187.4, I believe it was. And I got down to 34 and a half inches yesterday. It went up a quarter inch today. So there's some food weight I gained. Um, and I'm probably going to lose that again um, on the next fast, um, which starts, I'm going to start a little early, probably around six or seven tonight. So that way my 36 hours ends at like seven in the morning. And I actually fast longer because I generally stay up late and sleep in um, because of my part-time job and I'm kind of a night owl type of person. So I will let you know how that goes in the future. I'm going to do a kind of a result. I want to try this for two weeks. I will occasionally mention in my videos some of my progress as I go. And I'm going to continue to pump out Monday through Friday a video every day. Um, but I'm going to have to do a lot of these uncut videos to keep doing that. But remember, I'm not a fucking expert. I'm just a fucking asshole. Please like and subscribe for more motherfucking shit. And I'm going to make shit everywhere. I'm going to shit all over the place. Or something. And please check out scottthetruckdriver.com. Check out my recommended products page. I just updated it a little bit. I added uh, you know, some of the equipment that I'm testing out. Um, which you'll see in tomorrow's video. I'm putting a video together where I took my uh, drone out to Chittenango Falls. Um, it was ultimately a stressful fail, but, you know, we'll stay tuned. I'll share that with you um, for tomorrow's video. I got to edit that, though. That's a lot of editing work and shit. So that's my goal to get out tomorrow, and of course I have to work tomorrow night. So there's that. And, uh... Thank you to all my contributors on scottthetruckdriver.com. You guys have been really supportive of what I've been doing. Also, th special thanks to Dave and MSP, who is you know, pretty much fully responsible for this video, given his uh, sizable financial contributions and sending me the article that inspired me to even make this topic. Um, and also... I've been getting a lot of research in the research section on scottthetruckdriver.com um, where you can suggest different things that you want me to take a look at. I do get them all. I can't respond to every email. I just don't have the time or, you know, I, I get to see them all. I read them as I go, but I can't generally sit there and respond to each one. But if you pique my interest or you trigger me or something of that nature, it will end up, just like Dave and MSP's submission of this Diet Fits study to me, it will end up in a video at some point and I will, you know, give you all the credit necessary. Um, please check out this study and see what flaws you can find when you read through it. Um, there's more than one uh, article on this. The one he sent me was the summary at the beginning of the study and the, the JAMA Network one that I'm posting in the description, that takes you to the uh, final you know, results and how, what they, conclusions they arrived at. Ultimately, there's no difference is what they're saying. It doesn't mean shit to be keto to, or to be low fat, you know, which you know, vegans are going to throw this study at us. Been receiving a lot of vegan shit lately. Um, you guys apparently want me to fight with vegans. I don't know why. Um, the vegans have been fairly decent about leaving me alone, even though I just received an egg video uh, because I eat eggs in the egg industry and I received some horrible video of all the bad shit that they do to eggs. And I probably am going to watch that the next time I eat eggs and I'm going to just leave it on while I'm eating my eggs. And you know what? I'm still going to enjoy the shit out of my eggs because when it comes to that, um, it's first of all, it's not my responsibility to police the motherfucking industries. That's the government's responsibility and they're doing a piss poor job. And since we elect our government officials, ultimately, if we want to change the way it's done, that's the channel we got to go because I think asking people to sacrifice their health by giving up animal foods is choosing animals over humans. And when it's them or me, I'm going to choose me and the people I care about. And I don't recommend the vegan diet. I don't. I never will. Um, it's not a full diet that we are meant to eat. Vegetarian? Okay, be a vegetarian. You know, at least you're getting everything you need. Vegans, you're not getting everything you need. You have to supplement. It's And generally, a lot of people, it's got like a 50% dropout rate. They fail. 
you know, sooner or later at the, because of health, because of the way they feel. Um, so, you know, I'm, I don't really want to talk shit to the vegans. In fact, I'm hoping that this video doesn't end up in that vegan fight. Granted, it's profitable for me to talk about vegan shit. That gets all kinds of views. That gets all kinds of watch time. That brings in ad revenue. But it also brings in assholes. And people who, you know, are really, I don't know, elitist in their views. And they, they're not open-minded to anything. They're, they don't want to have a real logical debate. They want to preach their religion and down all the things I kind of stand for. Because they seem to hate keto, a lot of uh, vegans. I do know I have a few open-minded vegans here. And I want to keep it that way. I don't want to be swarmed with evangelical vegans that aren't open-minded to maybe they don't have everything right. Maybe the diet's not the healthiest fucking thing in the world. I'm not here to say that it's not that that you know it's not healthier than the standard American diet. Every fucking way that you can eat whole foods is healthier than standard American diet. And a healthy vegan, a whole foods vegan, in my book, is healthier than a standard American dieter. Long term, that's questionable, but they'll figure that out eventually. Eventually, a, a vegan's going to come to a point where they hit that wall of health to where they can't sustain the diet and be healthy anymore, and then they will have to make a choice on whether or not veganism is really doing the job for them. And that's, I'm fine with that. If you know, I've given you guys a lot of information. I don't want to be the end point for decisions. You should definitely experiment for yourself. You know, if you want to try, I don't want to try it. I would be miserable and hungry all the time on the vegan diet. I, that's not for me. You know, I even get, I'm getting articles now about people saying that carbs are fucking not the cause of, you know, hunger. And that's bullshit. There's a whole hunger and craving cycle. That comes with pasta, that comes with potatoes, that comes with rice. Yes, they're filling while you eat them. But two hours later, you're going to get hungry again. Keto, you eat, you could probably go eight, nine hours before you even think about food. Before you're even remotely hungry. The biggest problem with keto is if you don't have a lot of things to do, you could get bored and eat. Say, so I just completely went off the rails. This is what happens when I get free-flowing on these uncut fucking videos. So, thanks for sticking around. You got a little bonus at the end of this video. Please like and subscribe. Do all the shit. Check out scottthetruckdriver.com. Buy shit through the Amazon affiliate links. That helps the channel as well. And you know it doesn't cost you anything extra. All you do is got to do some extra clicking. You know, and then buy your shit. Or subscribe to Prime or do all of that. I get, like, bounties for that, too, if you guys go through all that shit. Also, tip in the tip jar. Buy my podcasts. There's plenty of content there. I will be recording another one next week. Not quite ready to do one this week. I got a lot going on. Um pretty much the rest of the week. So, have a nice motherfucking day and shit. Also, before you go, in the comments below, I'd like to hear if you liked this uncut video, if you want more of these, or if you think they sucked and I should go back to just typing a blog every day and just leave it at that. And then just keep the videos two or three a week. Is it too much content? I don't know. Maybe I'm putting out too much. I have noticed that I'm getting up more views now that I'm putting out more videos. So there's that. So let's just see how it goes. Also, for one last, for those of you who stayed to the very fucking end. Tomorrow, probably around 2, I'm going to experiment by going live with my motherfucking phone somewhere out in the world it's just going to be a short one a you know a test i want to i'll have us probably something to talk about briefly but around 2 p.m i'm going to take my phone i'm going to get in my car i'm going to drive somewhere i'm going to set up my phone probably use the osmo for that and i'm going to live stream from the car just to see if it works and if it works that's what i'll fucking do um, when I'm traveling, of course. Otherwise, my live streams will be pretty much the way they normally are when I do them.
Christmas. And that will be the live stream for the week. I'm moving the mic. Have a nice motherfucking day. Thanks for watching and shit.